The question I want to address in this video is we're told that the integral of 1 over x dx is equal to the natural log of x plus c. However, we're also told that it should be the log of modulus of x plus c. Now, why is this the case? Why isn't it just the natural log of x? Um, why is it log of mod x? We've seen uh, when we did the differentiation, we looked at implicit differentiation, we showed why y equals ln of x differentiates to 1 over x. So why doesn't 1 over x integrate to just the natural log of x plus a constant? Now, when we've looked at this before, okay, the way that I brought it up was because, well, when we look at a definite integral, uh, we can't take the natural logarithm of a negative number, and so this allows it to work, which is a bit of a... Um, kind of like a throwaway explanation. But it, kind of, it, make, it makes sense, because we were looking at things like um, uh, y equals 1 over x. Here's y equals 1 over x. And let's say you wanted to integrate 1 over x between minus 2 and minus 1. So integrating between minus 2 and minus 1, 1 over x dx, which seems like a perfectly legitimate thing to do. We want to work out what that area is, for example. Then uh, we would integrate that to log of x between minus 2 and 1. And then we would substitute in the negative 1 and then substitute in the negative 2. And this is where the problem arises, because we can't take the natural logarithm of a negative number. And so to get around that, to allow this to work, if we put modular sides around this, then it all makes everything nice. Because now I've got log of negative 1 modded. Minus 1 modulus of that is 1. Log of 1 is 0. And here, we've just got log of 2, so negative log 2. So the area will be log natural log of 2. Uh, the integral is minus ln of 2. Okay, And so that's why the modular signs work. But they do seem to pop out of thin air. Okay, So what we want to do is we want to go back to when we were looking at differentiation. And if we wanted to differentiate y equals the natural log of x, we would say dy by dx is 1 over x. Okay, and I don't think anyone is going to really dispute that at this stage. The only problem with writing that down is that it's only really half right. Um, because y equals the natural logarithm of x only exists for x greater than 0. This is the domain of ln of x. So when ln of x gets differentiated to 1 over x, this is true. It is 1 over x is the gradient function but only for x being greater than 0. Okay, So, in actual fact, when you differentiate ln of x, really there is this extra condition uh, that we just haven't really written down. Okay, Because we're taking uh, ln of x only to exist for x being greater than 0 anyway. Okay, So then that begs the question, well, if I am then integrating... 1 over x, when I'm working backwards, if there's no restriction on this domain, and the domain of 1 over x is just x can't be 0, but can be any other real number, then this can't integrate to log x plus c, because this has a domain of x being greater than 0. This has a domain of any real number apart from 0. So in order for the domain to be put through or to develop through this equation so that the left-hand side domain is the same as the right, that's where these modular signs come from. Okay? Now the domain of this is any real value apart from 0, which is exactly the same domain as the left-hand side. So the reason why the modular signs appear is in order to maintain the domain of the function. So 
when you are integrating, okay, and this comes in when you're integrating uh, f prime of x over f of x as well, this should integrate to natural log of the modulus of f of x plus c. Now, that's why the modulus signs should really be there. Um, whether you would get penalised in an exam for forgetting them, uh, it's unlikely that you would, unless you were doing something like this, in which case, if you didn't have the modular signs, then yes, um, your mathematics would go wrong. Okay? So really, the modular signs should be there to maintain the domain. Um, so that's what we run with.